Um, I've done a few podcasts, but mostly I've done a lot of um, like interviews from um, TV and articles and things like that. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> My older brother and my uncle actually are both ISCs in growing up. My brother set a lot of precedents as he's the oldest of eight children. So I looked up to him a lot. Um, I also am more STEM minded than anything. So majoring in ISC really just made sense. And I love making things more efficient. I love streamlining processes and just going through life with how can I make things better? Yes, being an engineer and um, going to NC State definitely was um, in my, I guess, family line. <laughs> yeah, well, not technically, because I'm actually adopted. So, yeah, so um, actually six of my siblings are from my parents. And then my younger brother and I are adopted from Vietnam. My grandfather is an engineer. My great grandfather was an engineer as well. So it did make things pretty interesting at home because my dad is definitely an interesting man as well. So um, having things just built differently at home is really interesting. I've seen videos on YouTube, just perusing late at night, just um, <laughs> going through rabbit holes. So I've seen this growing up and I always thought it was a really intriguing competition because I mean, who rolls down a really steep hill after cheese? Um, so in 2020, before COVID, I was actually studying abroad in England and I wanted to partake in this, but we got sent home right before. And I don't think they had a competition that year. So when I remembered this event this year in March, I looked up to see when it was expecting to happen. And it happened to be when I was going to be doing my post-graduation trip after graduating and touring Europe. So that was really fun. And um, I kind of planned my trip around it and made sure to do it. Yeah, actually, it was supposed to be a week before it actually happened because the Queen's Jubilee pushed it back a week. Um, they didn't, I guess, expect the Queen's Jubilee to be a specific time. So initially it was supposed to be the end of May and it ended up being the first weekend of June. <laughs> yeah, I actually missed one of my close friends wedding to do this. They understood. <laughs> well, I'm a very competitive person. I do love interesting competitions, but I just really, really hope that I wasn't going to break anything. But um before the race, the night before the race, I actually watched We Are the Champions, which is a Netflix docuseries about different competitions. And I had never seen it before, but someone told me to watch it right before the race. So I watched it. And this woman who's won four times, she's the reigning champion of the women's division of the Cooper's Hill cheese rolling. She broke her collarbone <laughs> and going into the race the next day, I was like, well, I really hope I don't break anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, in the division, two after me, I think a guy broke his leg. So definitely not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So I've participated in the Krispy Kreme challenge, which is if you're from Raleigh, you know this. If you're from NC State, it's an NC State tradition. It's where you run 2.5 miles to the local Krispy Kreme in Raleigh. You eat 12 donuts and then you run back. And the object is to do it under an hour, but I've done it twice and I still can't get it under an hour. Um, it's really fun because people dress up in costumes and they run. So the past two times I've done it, I've dressed up in this big blow up inflatable 
blue costume and I have been running down Hillsboro. And the funniest thing is when I'm running, you can hear me before you see me. So people are like looking behind their shoulders and just having this terrified look on their faces when they turn back and see me. Yeah, so I actually practiced on a hill near campus. It's called Dorothea Dix. It's a local park in Raleigh. So I was with my boss and we were just walking around Dorothea Dix and I saw these hills and it was about a week or two before I was taking off for my Europe trip. And I told her, I was like, well, maybe now's the time to practice whether or not I'm going to do a bear roll or like head first in my decision to roll. And I have been asking people like two weeks before my departure, I was like, do you guys know any hills like steep hills that you can roll or practice down in Raleigh? And no one like said like they didn't have any suggestions. So it was, I was on my own for that one. So we went and we rolled. She actually videoed the um, our attempts to roll down and it was not a very steep hill. So it didn't really take too much time. And it was also um just not exciting in the sense of the Cooper's Hill cheese rolling in comparison. So it was a, it was good exposure rolling, but it definitely did not help in the general scheme of things. Wow. So this hill is really, really steep. It's probably like it's it's a black diamond if you're thinking skiing. It's one of the steepest hills in England. It has a 2.21 ratio as like a gradient for the steepness of the hill. And it's known in England for being such a steep hill. So when I got to the bottom of it, because I could see while walking to the hill, there's about like a 30 minute trek to get to the hill. And then you have to walk up the hill to get to the top. So... It was a bit terrifying. I'm not going to lie. It is a very, very intimidating hill and um, it has a lot of potholes, too. So it's not just oh, it's it, it's not just a hill. It has uneven footing and rocky surfaces, not necessarily rocky, meaning rocks, but in general, like the hill shape is rocky. Yeah, yeah. People, they are, have they have drones to show the steepness of the hill. And leading up, the Cooper's Hill Facebook page would post like, we've done the cleaning or here's a drone picture, like preparing us for the race. So my friend and I, uh, we actually get there around like 10. And I think the first race starts at 11. Um, I think the women's race starts at like 12 and it should be over by one. I think that's how the timeline goes. Um, we get there. It's a bit misty still. The weather has been raining for a few days. Not a surprise. It's England. Um, we get to the top of the hill. And it's very misty. You can't really see the bottom. Um, there's a lot of people still even there at like 1030. And so um, you can see people walking to the event, which is really cool because, I mean, you're such you're at such a high elevation. Um, the crowd's really, really nice. They just are talking and the people at the top of the hill who are competing, they were friendly there. There's some news crews there. Um, and overall, a lot of people are here just to spectate. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, I mean, it's every, every year there, but, um, rugby players from the local rugby team in Gloucester, they come and they're at the bottom of the hill to stop people from running down to hitting the metal casing that encloses the hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how, you know, you win. Watch the rugby player first.
yeah. So as an ISC, our main goal is to make things the most efficient way you want to do things the most efficient way to, I mean, save time and in competition, that's really important so that you can be the first one to do things. And, um, not only is it like the fastest way, but it's also, how do I also not get injured? So watching these two races beforehand, I recorded them to look back during the breaks because they did downhill, uphill race with the kids, downhill, uphill races with another set of kids, and then the women's race, and then another men's race. So I had some time between those two races to look over the film, essentially, to see um, where did the people who won start and how did they compete and how did they win? So I think that was, um, I applied some IC mindset skills, not necessarily like strictly IC, but it's, I guess the mindset, the problem solving skills that we learn in school. So really, how do we look at this from different point of views? Um, I guess just day to day, but I'm also pretty competitive. So this was a pretty easy way for me to look at things and really want to win. <laughs> So it's, it's rainy, as I said. So the ground is like semi soft. It's not strictly hard. Um, and when the race was starting, I could see someone from the corner of my eye, like she kept inching up. So before the race had even started, I wanted to be on the same line as she was because I didn't want her to have an advantage necessarily. So, um, the person who's rolling the wheel of cheese, there's a commentator. Um, he's dressed in a silly outfit. He has like a hat on a cane and, um, an England flag on. So, uh, he has a white coat on as well. And he's just been doing this for years. So he goes one to be ready two for the steady three for the cheese. And at four, you go, I didn't even hear four. I went when everyone else was going <laughs> because I did not want to, um, be behind. And so I went and I had a few strategies going into this. I had talked to my mom about these um, and I had been coming up with these for like a couple of weeks now. So my strategies were one, do I start sprinting right off the bat and then just go with everyone else and see where that goes Two, do I wait? Do I like kind of shuffle and then sprint later when they're falling down? Or three, since it's a very steep hill, do I just launch myself from the top of the hill? And I had called my mom and dad right before the race, like that morning. And they said, Abby, whatever you do, do not do number three. You're going to injure yourself. Please do not do that. And so I did not end up going with that. I went with the sprinting off the bat and um, the sprint took a roll and I kept rolling. And I think the momentum of the role really um, made it so that I won because there was a woman who was behind me, but she didn't catch up because of my momentum. I kept rolling and she kept falling a little bit. So her momentum lacked a little bit more. So from rolling so much, I was really dizzy at the end and I was like slightly touched by the rugby players. They like kind of, made it so that I stopped from the bottom of the hill. And then I got up, I said, did I win? And the lady who carried the eight pound block of cheese came running to me and she said, you just won the Cooper's Hill cheese rolling. And I got it and put it over my head and I was so ecstatic. Yeah, it was, it was a great moment. And after uh, tumbling down this, that hill and getting dirt in my teeth, it was, it made up for it. Yeah, it's been so surreal. So many opportunities have opened up from this that I never even thought would be possible. Um, it's been a really fun experience coming back from Europe and just doing all these little things here and there, keeping up the cheese image, I guess. Um, so yesterday, actually, I was doing the siren at the Canes game. I was um, I was emailed and asked if I wanted to do this. So that was a really cool experience. Yes, I went to, um, let's see, 
I stayed in Barcelona, Spain for most of the summer. I traveled around Spain. Um, I went to Portugal, to England multiple times, Scotland, um, Greece, and Sweden to see some family. Yeah, just about. Honestly, I think so, because... Um, global experiences are so important. I think um, it's really important to see how people live in different areas and how they do different things um, and the ways that they do them, because they're different than how we would approach things in the U.S., which are really that's really interesting. And um, their technology as well. So in Spain, I saw differences of technology in England. I saw how well they do transportation with the bus system and the underground in London. And then just like things here and there and like Sweden as well, they have a great Metro system. So just seeing things run efficiently makes me really happy too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different experiences, different people. <laughs> It does. <laughs> so I like the cheese. I don't know about all my other family and friends. Uh, they would probably disagree, but my grandparents also like them and they are quite the cheese connoisseurs. Um, so I had the cheese with the chancellor. Uh, we had a big charcuterie board after Pacapalooza, which is the welcome week event from NC State. Um, and I brought some ham from Spain back, which paired well with the cheese. And I feel like if you pair it well with the right charcuterie board and with the right spreads and jams, it's a good tasting cheese. Now, if you eat it alone, it's a bit strong. It's very pungent. It's a semi semi soft um, cheese. It's in the cheddar family, but it also has blue cheese tones. So that's how to describe that cheese. Yeah, a little loud. The chancellor kept saying, that's some funky cheese. Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. Uh, I start in 11 or 10 days now. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been just doing um, traveling and spending time with friends and family for the past few months, which has been really nice, but it's also going to be nice to start doing something um, and having kind of a routine. So I'll be doing consulting for an accounting and consulting firm. It's going to be very interesting. I'm, I left Raleigh, so I'm going to be in Charlotte now, which is a different atmosphere, definitely in a new city that I need to get to know. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You've been listening to Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Norcross, Georgia. We hope you'll share this and other Problem Solved episodes with your friends and colleagues. Learn more about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, as well as how you can become a member of IISE by visiting podcast.iise.org. 